let's talk about electrical. The, uh, we're going to look at a schematic, a drawing, for uh, a very simple Piper electrical system. This diagram is not 100% accurate, but it's more data than you're going to get out of anything in the POH. And there, I've left out a few very, very minor details that no one will ever ask you as a private pilot. We're going to say that this diagram is good whether you're flying a PA-38 Tomahawk or a PA-28 uh, Warrior II. So there's the diagram. First, we're going to look at a few things. This is a ground symbol right here. So this symbol right here is a ground symbol. If I drew it bigger, it's one, two, three lines as they get shorter. And the ground effectively means that everything that's metal on the airplane, the structure, is all electrically touching each other. And this works the same in cars. The negative side of the battery is always connected to ground and the other side of the battery is positive. We'll get back to it here in just a moment. So that way, electrons have a way to travel. The electrons leave the negative side of the battery, and they, in this case, the battery, they could go through this component and through a fuse and come back to the battery, and the battery would be discharging. So you have to have a complete circuit. So we might as well talk about the battery. So here, right here, we have what's called a 12 volt battery, but I'm not going to call it 12 volt. I'm going to call it 12.6 volts. If it's brand new, fully charged, and it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, if you measure the voltage, the pressure on that coming out of that battery, it would be 12.6 volts. I say that because the alternator down here. When it's running, it runs at 13.5 to 14 volts. And so what you need to know is that in a battery and alternator system, whichever of these two components is putting out the higher voltage, that's the ones that's going to supply all these other components with their electrical power. Now, of course, if the engine's not running and you haven't turned the alternator on, and all you do is turn on the battery switch, so that's what this is. This is the battery master right here this switch right here. If you close it and turn it on, then the battery can be connected to the bus bar and everything can run, but and everything's going to drain the battery because the alternator at that time is zero. So let's look at that. Let's say we close the switch. That means the electrons can leave the negative side of the battery, go through the ground, go through this switch, and they can go into this coil right here. And this coil is actually an electromagnet that coil in this case is an electromagnet. And there's a piece of iron in here, this iron plate. It gets pulled down when this electromagnet yanks on it, and it touches these two contacts together. And effectively, let's see if I can get rid of that silly line. There we go. And it allows this positive side of the battery to go through there and be connected to what's called, we're going to call it the 14-volt DC bus, and it is positive in that it is connected to the positive side of the battery. When we turn on the battery master switch, if you're in a real airplane and it's quiet and you listen, when you flip that switch, you can hear a little tiny clunk from inside of the engine compartment. And this this uh, uh, component right here, and this is the battery relay. The battery relay energizes. The electromagnet is powered now. It pulls down on this piece of iron, makes a contact, and that allows the positive side of the battery to be connected to the bus bar. So that's what happens when you flip the battery master. You engage or in, 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 uh, in, uh, energize a battery relay. Now the battery is connected to this 14-volt uh, DC bus bar. And now everything that's hooked up to the bus bar can now work. For instance, at that moment, the alternator warning light is going to come on. The alternator warning light is going to come on. That's this component right there. Go back. That's this component right here. 
One of these days I'm going to figure out how to do this. Here's the alternator warning light. It says ALT inside of it. And so it's going to come on as well as other things. Uh, for instance, the engine gauges, you'll notice. The engine gauges. But I'm going to get to that here shortly. So we've covered uh, the battery and I think it'll be easier if we look at this sideways. So go ahead and turn your diagram sideways. We've already labeled the battery switch. I think it's a lot easier if we label it sideways. This is the battery relay. This is the battery. This is the negative side of the battery. This is the positive side of the battery. We've already identified these things as ground symbols. And this right here is our 14 volt DC bus, which is positive. Because when everything's hooked up, it's connected to the positive side of the battery. So we flip the switch. Electricity goes through our relay. It turns into an electromagnet. This piece of iron closes, and now the battery is connected to the bus bar, and the bus bar is hot. Or you could say the bus bar is connected to the positive side of the battery. Now, if anything hooked up to the bus bar will work, we've already labeled the alternator warning light. Let's go ahead and label some more things. So here's the alternator. And here is the alternator amps gauge that we're used to looking at. And this switch right here is the alternator switch. And here we have a voltage regulator. voltage regulator is there so to tell the alternator how much power to put out to maintain between 13 and a half to 14 volts. You'll notice even though a battery might be called a 12 volt battery, it's really 12.6 volts if it's brand new fully charged at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The alternator, even though the bus bar is labeled in the POH and other places as a 14 volt bus bar, the alternator puts out somewhere between 13 and a half and 14, which is normal. So that's what we would read if we had a voltmeter, but in this airplane we don't have a voltmeter. But that's what the voltage regulator is doing. It's controlling the alternator to put out the right amount of electrical power to maintain 13.5 or 14 volts. There is also the overvoltage relay. And the overvoltage relay, if the voltage gets up somewhere around 16 volts or so, it's going to turn the alternator off so that too much uh, voltage can't be supplied to all of our components and damage them. So uh, the alternator uh, warning light, it'll come on if the voltage is way too low. Something below, something below or right around, something below 13 volts, somewhere around 12 and a half, eh, probably probably comes on around 12.8, something just below 13 volts, the alternator warning light will come on. Or if the over-voltage relay turns off the alternator, now the voltage is going to drop, and so the alternator warning light will also come on if that is the issue. So what you can do is if the alternator warning light comes on, you can actually uh, cycle all of this by turning the alternator switch off just by itself. Now you would want to check and make sure the circuit breaker Uh, isn't popped out. If the circuit breaker is not popped out, you go ahead and, uh, and of course if it's popped out then you may need to reset it. We'll get to that here shortly. You would turn the alternator off and then turn it for more than a second and then turn it back on and that might fix it if the alternator warning light goes off and the alt amps now reads a normal amount then you'd be pretty happy. Um, alternator amps, it's at zero when the alternator is not working and as soon as the alternator kicks in then it shows something higher than that. And across that first five or ten minutes while the engine is running, uh, 
you're going to, the battery is going to have to get charged up. The alternator, since it's putting out a higher voltage than the battery, it's going to be supplying all the electrons, all the power to all of our components, and it's also going to be charging the battery for that first five or ten minutes. But once the battery gets charged, or as the battery is charging, you're going to notice you're going to notice the alt amps go down a little tiny bit. Let's just say it was taking 10 amps to charge the battery. It's even going to come down 8 amps or so, and then it's always going to be about plus 2 amps just to maintain the battery. It's always going to be trying to maintain the battery. And where does that energy go? It keeps the battery warm. It doesn't get hot, but the battery gets warm. So if you turn, could turn off everything on the aircraft, which you can't turn everything on, and all you and the battery is fully charged, the needle would come down here to two amps. So whatever this is reading, if the battery is charged, then two of the amps that it's reading is just for the battery, and everything else is powering everything else. So since we hit circuit breaker, let's talk about circuit breakers. Uh, circuit breakers are there to protect the wire. So circuit breakers equal to protect the wire. Uh, it's a misconception that circuit breakers are there to protect the component. The circuit breaker won't save any of these components. It's just there, when I say protect the wire, it's there so that if too many amps are going through that wire before it gets too hot to cause an electrical fire, it'll pop, the circuit breaker will pop out and uh, you'll be able to see it in the airplane over on the co-pilot side. And uh, that means that too many amps was going through it, too many electrons were going through it. And we'll talk about resetting circuit breakers uh, before this lecture is over. Okay, let's keep going. This up here is the starter. Starter motor. And this, excuse me, this switch is for the starter. And it's on the magneto switch. And then this relay right here is the starter relay. And the good news is that this starter relay works identical to the battery relay. You close the starter switch when you turn the key, and it allows electrical power from the battery to go through ground and through this electromagnet. So here, this coil in here, again, is an electromagnet and it pulls this metal plate down this iron plate and so now electrical power from the battery going through ground can go through the starter through the mass the starter relay through the bus bar and it keeps going to the uh, positive side of the battery and it drains the battery so when you flip the starter switch you're actually energizing or engaging or allowing the starter relay coil in here to turn into an electromagnet. It pulls a piece of iron down, and that makes the connection. So this is really an electrically operated switch, and that's what allows the electricity to go through the starter motor. And again, the starter switch is spring-loaded. You let go of it, the starter pops open, and of course there's also a spring on both of these relays. You don't have to draw it in, but there's a spring on both of these relays. So when the electromagnet gets turned off, the spring pulls this metal plate up and turns the starter relay, or in this case of the battery relay, it turns them off. Oh, we got a couple more items down here. I actually want this uh, item down here is a clock. And uh, you'll notice that from the battery, it's connected all the time. There's no switch. These are actually fuses, just like in a car, but they're not in the airplane. They're in the engine compartment, so you can't replace them. Electricity goes through the fuses, and in this one here, so here's the clock. So the clock, the ground is always connected to the battery, and the other side of the clock is always connected to the battery, so the clock is always going to run. And this device here is the Hobbs meter, and we're going to go ahead and write in a switch and we're going to call it the engine oil pressure switch. Because the only time this switch closes and turns on the Hobbs meter is when the engine starts and the oil pressure of the engine 
moves this switch. And all of this stuff is in, underneath the cowling. You can't mess with it. And so that mean, what that means is the Hobbs meter is going to run. If the engine starts up, the Hobbs meter is going to run. Even if you never turned on the battery switch, the Hobbs meter is still going to run. So if you're flying along in flight and you have some problem and you turn off the electrical master switch and the alternator master switch, the Hobbs meter and the clock are still going to run, so you're still going to get to pay for that aircraft rental. Okay, let's look at the top half of this electrical diagram. You'll notice these first four items right here are the first main switches in a PA-28 in the simulator and in a PA-28 Tomahawk. So this right here is the electric fuel pump. And then we have the landing light. And then we have the anti-collision light. And then we have the pitot heat. And you're looking at that going, Mr. Johnson, that coil, is that an electromagnet? Now, the answer is yes, but that's not its primary purpose. This coil is actually a heating coil, and it's essentially the same as the heating coil inside of a blow dryer. And when you run electricity through a wire, it gets hot. We're just going to run a lot of electricity through this wire, so it's going to get hot enough. And on the pitot mast, if you think it might be icing up or going to ice up, you turn on the pitot heat so that that little hole that where the ram and static gets pushed into the pitot mast, so that ram uh, and static air can actually, pressure can get in there because you don't want it to get clogged up with ice. So you notice there's a switch. So each one of these has a switch. These are the four gray switches for the PA-28. And, of course, each one has its own circuit breaker. And then uh, we're going to skip for these three. We'll come right back. And these are the navigation lights or the nav lights. And if you're going to fly at night, you got to turn on the nav lights. There's one on the, the left wing, the right wing, and on the tail. We'll talk more about that when we get to night flying. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in. It looks like I missed a wire right there. And there we go. And then I want to look at these three things right here. These three items right here, you notice there's no switches. On with a bus. The bus bar. Okay, so what that means is whenever you turn on the battery switch and this bus bar becomes hot, you notice there's a circuit breaker and there's no switch for this device or this device or this device. This device here is the turn coordinator. So there's no switch. The other one equals, you could also say that these don't have any switches to turn them off separately. If you turn on the bus bar, then they get turned on. These three things right here, I'm going to put them like that. And these are the engine gauges. There's no switch for that. And then this last one is the stall warning horn. So you can't turn off the stall warning horn in flight unless you turn off the master switch and the bus bar goes dead. Then it won't work. You'll also notice that I have a couple more components up here. We're going to call this our comm nav radio. And we're going to call this here our transponder. And you'll notice that through circuit breakers, now there's switches on on the radio. There's usually not separate switches for each one. And you'll notice that I've got a switch here. So this is a switch. Of course, there's lots of switches all over this place. We've got lots of switches. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, sometimes on some radios, not in the simulator, but in some airplanes rather, there's a separate bus. This right here would be the avionics bus. And then this switch would be the avionics master. The nice thing about avionics master is that when you start up the engine, in case the alternator puts out uh, a little bit too much extra power, it can't get to your radio, so you usually leave it off until you start the engine and get the alternator on. But the other nice thing is when you're shutting down, you can turn off all of the radios, just leave them turned on, but you can turn this switch and open it.
So that's what the purpose of the avionics master is. So you can leave them all off or leave them all on rather easily. But you need to understand there's a lot of small airplanes that may not have the avionics switch. So let's see. I think I got everything I wanted. Yay. So remember, on the test, I'm going to give you a diagram that looks like this. I think I'll be turning it uh, so with the holes on the paper like this. So I'll be rotating this 90 degrees, and then I'll be giving you a list. I will list items to label. So I recommend you practice that. Okay, I was just making sure we covered it. We showed you what a ground symbol was, a circuit breaker symbol, and uh, resetting a circuit breaker. Okay, so resetting it means it pops out. If you're looking at it in the cockpit, then there's usually it's a, a, a bigger collar like this. And when it pops out, when it pops out, it looks like this. And usually then there's a some white in here so that you can see it besides the fact that it popped out and this is the collar right there besides the fact that it popped out you can see the white now the question becomes reset it now the POH usually says wait a minute and push it in but what's way more important than that is what's really a good idea circuit breakers are these things are slow sometimes they take one to two minutes to operate they're slow to operate and so all that time while it's waiting to get for to pop the circuit breaker, the wires are getting hot. The wires are getting hot. Somewhere too much electricity is flowing. And it, let's just say it takes a minute to pop. And, or, and so now you're thinking, do I go ahead and push it back in? Well, essentially, the answer is no, don't reset it unless uh, required for safety. and you wait one minute or more. So we're actually adding this. This is not in the POH. The POH says to wait a minute, and then you can push it in. But the FAA has some uh, very good guidelines, and I highly recommend it. Don't push a circuit breaker back in unless it's required for safety purposes, like you're flying at night and you're landing at an airport that has no lights, uh, maybe you need to use the landing light, or you're in the middle of Class C airspace and the radio circuit breaker popped, you might decide you need to push it back in. Uh, but if at all possible, don't reset. Resetting just means pushing it back in. So we already covered battery and alternator voltages. Oh, oh voltages, battery amp hour rating. An amp hour rating for both the PA28 and PA38 is 25 amp hours or amp hours. Essentially, amp times hours equals amp hours. So if we pull 25 amps out of that battery and we do it for one hour, it'll give it'll that it it's equal to 25 amp hours. So if we have a rating of 25 amp hours, the battery will last an hour if we're sucking 25 amps out of it. But that's if it's a brand new, this is, this is also based on brand new, and it's fully charged at the moment you started timing things. So the likelihood of it being perfect at that moment is pretty slim. So we're going to say that most of the time, if you if you have stuff on during the day, you're going to have approximately 30 minutes. And if it's at night, uh, it's going to be less. Now you can get make these numbers bigger by turning off unnecessary electrical equipment. Unnecessary electrical equipment and you might be able to bump this up so the daytime you might be able to get 45 minutes and night you maybe you'll get 30 minutes it really 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 depends on what are the things you leave on what you're literally going to want to do is turn off everything you think you can get away with um, and then another thing which people don't think about if you're day and it's vfr and you're not talking on the radio but you had to have some electrical power when you get there, you might decide to turn the master switch off and don't drain the battery at all 
for half of an hour or an hour, and then when you get there, turn it on and the battery will still be there. So another answer to if the alternator quits, if the alternator quits and now you're dependent upon this amp hour rating, then you might decide not just to turn all unnecessary electrical equipment off. You may say, I can get away with all my electrical equipment off for an hour. I'm going to turn it all off. But that is a decision that the pilot in command would have to make. Okay, we already covered the engine oil pressure that operates the Hobbs meter, and we already covered those three components that run, uh, the two components that run with the battery master off. That's the Hobbs meter and the clock. And of course, what's powered whenever the bus bar is powered, that's the turn coordinator and the engine gauges and the stall warning horn will all work because uh, there's no switches. As long as the bus bar has powered, those, th those things will work. And we already covered that coils in relays are electromagnets, but the coil in the heating element in the pitot heat is a heating element. And of course, if the battery is fully charged, let's look at alt amp. If this is our alt amp gauge, it's going to read down here at zero when the alternator is not working. Let's say it comes up to 30 amps after we get the engine started and we turn on a bunch of stuff. And across the next five or ten minutes, it comes down and now it's at 20 amps. Two of those amps is keeping the battery charged. Okay.